Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the beginning of some summer propagation that I am doing. Uh, I'm actually rescuing plant that I plan on taking with me to a new house. I am selling the house that I am currently in and moving uh, back to uh, Raleigh where I grew up. And I am gonna be moving this greenhouse with me that I built last year in last year's propagation series. Uh, there's been, this will be the third year of doing propagation videos on here. The first year I built a little, uh, little PVC hoop house right here that was very inexpensive, but also very temporary. Uh, last year we upgraded it to uh, this, this, uh, this little greenhouse here that has uh, used the top rail from chain link fence uh, right here, which are still actually very inexpensive. These only cost about you know, $12 a piece. And I think maybe we use six pieces, you know, including that crossbar right there. So that's uh, pretty reasonable. And then some treated two befores on the, on the ends, plastic to go over the top of it. Uh, there's a clock over here on the wall that was purchased in that first season. Uh, I'll link uh, that below. That's a clock that works in seconds. Uh, works fantastic for what we're doing here. It turns on for maybe one, two, three second burst, and then uh, we'll wait two, three, four, five, six minutes, whatever you set it for, to come back on and run again. And then it's controlling a valve down here on the ground. I'll give you some close-ups of all of that. Uh, another technique that I have used in the past uh, is this little, uh, technique here uh, where this uh, part goes into the greenhouse and when water is on this little screen it pushes it down as the water evaporates it comes back up and when it comes back up it turns the valve on uh, these um, I've used these leaves uh, I use these leaves quite a few years but I found that over some period of time uh, some mold mildew other things would build up on the screen and I'd be constantly having to fidget with it uh, to keep it uh, to keep it running properly you know it would add weight to this and so then it wouldn't come up as easily as the as the water evaporated off of it that kind of thing but uh, they've been used for a long time and uh, they are effective this actually cost this uh, this leaf i think um, i'll link it down below if it's available on amazon but it's probably uh, double the cost of that clock actually so um, um, this i think is a better strategy uh, anyway and it's got but you know backup battery in it if the, if the power goes out and then I use these 50 cell uh, trays right here with a, uh, if you, you know, th there's two seasons of these videos uh, that, you, that you can learn uh, quite a bit more than I'm probably going to go over in, in this season. But I use these rigid 50 cell trays that I don't need to put, um, I don't need anything else to go with them because they're rigid enough that I can pick them up and grab them. I can even pick them up with one hand on the end and grab them and they last for several seasons. Uh, but I use a 50% peat moss, 50% perlite mix. That's how I root things. There's a lot of techniques, but I've just, I've always used that 50% perlite, 50% uh, peat moss uh, mix, and uh, then a rooting hormone of your choice. You can use a powder or a liquid. I'll link that down below as well. But next weekend, uh, or next week's video, um, we'll, we'll be sticking cuttings. I, I've got to get this done really, really quickly. I've got to build an additional box or two um, to put these in, and then I got to get on it really, really quickly. Let me show you the box, the small box that I'm doing uh, the cuttings in uh, this year because I'm trying to keep this whole operation mobile. I can't put the plastic on here while I'm trying to sell this house. This has to come down, move to Raleigh. It'll be reset up up there for next year's propagation series and overwintering uh, some other plants. I, I got a lot of uses that I can get out of this that I'll show you over time. Uh, let me show you this uh, box over here and some surprising results after 13 months of having some rooted having some cuttings in that box. So this box has been under this deck uh, for quite some period of time. It just, it doesn't matter if it's a deck, it just needs to be in a shady space. That clear top uh, will build up way too much heat in it if it's in the full sun. There's holes drilled in the side here, and then there's a few uh, small holes uh, drilled into the top as well. And it's just a basic, you know, this was all used lumber uh, that I had scrapped from something else. I'll link the video down below where I built this little box. The main thing is it's got feet on it and it's actually elevated off the ground. You can't tell as much because there's a few leaves around the front, but there's air circulation underneath it. It was uh, that little felt cover was stapled in there and then a peat moss and a perlite mix went in there and then the cuttings were stuck directly in that, that little plastic cover went over it. You need to go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy yourself the clear plastic box first and then build your box to the size that you can find because um, that's the best way to do it. Because <laughs> if you build a box first and then go look for a plastic bin, that's probably not going to work out very well. Okay, 13 months ago maybe I stuck the cuttings uh, that are in this box right here and I have not taken the cover off of it. 
since then. And so I want to show you guys something. Um, this is absolutely amazing to me. Uh, there's gardenias uh, rooted right here, uh, rooted quite well. There's some beauty berries rooted back there. Um, uh, what else do we have in here? There's some Confederate jasmine also uh, rooted in here. And uh, they have sat here for 13 months in this box, uh, in this uh, peat uh, mix. And uh, they rooted in pretty quickly and then uh, they have had no fertilizer, no direct sun, no anything. And you can see they're firmly rooted in there. Obviously they could come out. Um, be, I'd probably tip prune these just a little bit, you know, take that newest growth off. And then they need to be adapted back to the sunlight. Like they can take an hour or two of sunlight a day and, uh, and then three or four hours of sunlight until we can get them back into the sun and get them used to the sun again. And then they could be divided out and planted into containers, no problem, just a well-drained container mix, some sort of pine bark uh, container mix would be ideal. And then overwinter them the first year in a container, protecting them from the cold and boom, uh, next spring they could go in a bigger container and be grown out and sold or grown out and you know planted into your yard. But this again, this is the technique I'm going to use. I'm going to link the video down below where I built this box so you can see how I did it. I'm building two more of them this week and uh, next week uh, I'll get started uh, putting cuttings in them. Okay, here's the big change that's going to happen though. So for you guys, the best strategy might be to use the felt piece around the edge and fill it just like I did right here because you're not moving, but I am moving and I'm actually going to use the tray just like I use in the greenhouse with the 50% peat moss, 50% perlite blend. And I'm actually going to build my other two boxes to the size of it, okay? And so it'll just, I'm gonna fill those with the soil, put my rooted cuttings in them, have it where I can set it in a box with a plastic top on top of it, just like that. So that when I go to move, all I, I have a much easier um, operation to move about and to take with me uh, to the city of Raleigh. And uh, what's going into this, I'll show you right now. I've lived in this house for 23 years and I planted this dwarf purple crepe myrtle when I first moved in. It's actually the backdrop to a lot of my videos where I sit in the swing on the front porch. Everybody always wants to know what it is. Uh, it's just not sold in the trade uh, very much. So I'm gonna get these uh, rooted. Uh, I've got a video on this plant um, coming out here in the next few days. Right next to it is an inkberry holly that uh, is a super full one that has maintained its uh, growth all the way down to the base. A lot of these uh, inkberry hollies like this just get super woody over time. And so I selected this one a long, long time ago, uh, just obviously having some sort of uh, difference between it and shamrock and a few other varieties that would have been super, super thin down at the bottom at this point. So I definitely want to uh, get some cuttings off of it and uh, make sure that if I, if, I, if I do decide to just to dig it completely out of the ground, I want to have a backup plan, uh, have some cuttings, uh, just in case I kill it moving it. I've shown this azalea before, and I've actually taken cuttings on it before, and I've actually talked about uh, distributing them at some point to uh, viewers, and some people put their names in the hat for it. So I need to get cuttings off of this azalea. This azalea was from my grandfather's funeral. Uh, it was actually probably just some sort of florist azalea that I don't know the name of. It blooms beautifully back here every year though. I'm definitely gonna try to take the plant with me, but again, there's a definite possibility that uh, I could kill a plant uh, this big in the process of moving it. Uh, but right now we've got the perfect growth on the end of this plant to root. This is kind of semi hardwood. Uh, the, the new growth has hardened off just enough that we have perfect, perfect conditions to get lots and lots of cuttings off of this. I'll probably take as many as a hundred uh, cuttings off of this azalea make sure that I'm going to have it when I get where I'm going, but also uh, be able to distribute some at that point to that old list of folks who had put their name in the hat for it. So there's just three items that I'm going to be taking cuttings from that I need to take with me when I go, that things that I'm possibly transplanting and might kill along the way, making sure I have a backup, backup uh, rooted cuttings uh, or clones uh, to, the, to those items. I've got several other items that are kind of one of a kind things. I've got a holly that I had uh, found years ago, I didn't think it was good enough to, uh, to introduce, and there's like a million upright hollies anyway. I don't know that it would even compete, but I want to make sure uh, that I keep it. Uh, it's important to me. Uh, so that's another one that I'll be, uh, that I'll be showing you uh, how to root. But this first, like I say, this first video is just kind of an introduction to this. Of, I'm going to be doing a completely mobile propagation effort that uh, you know, I'll be able to pick up and, and take with me. So I'm going to build two more of those boxes that fit that tray 
uh, this week. I'm going to link the video below where I built that little box uh, if you want to follow along uh, with me. If you're more interested in you know, building something more like this, that's uh, last year's season of the Propagation Series. Uh, it's, it's still there and still up. I've got, there's a, um, a playlist on my channel called uh, Propagation. And so, uh, you know, go, go find those videos. This was a very inexpensive, uh, you know, system here. It's, you know, it's 13 months later and it's in perfect shape. It's, it's like, you know, basically like the day I put it up uh, and still would work perfect right now. And I'd like to be able to use it because this is definitely, that's the way that I can get, make sure that I have a backup plan, get a few things rooted. I'll get 60% or something like that of, of them rooted. This is a thing that's a more, viable commercial type propagation method where I could probably get 90 plus percent of the cuttings that I stick rooted. I'm going to link everything below that you'll need to follow along for either this uh, or that. Um, thank you very much for watching and uh, next Monday I'll show you all the cuttings that are going in. After that I'll show you where they end up in Raleigh and, and, uh, and how, they get, how they root out over the course of the rest of the summer. Thanks for watching. To, uh, to make sure that I make sure that I keep what is happening.